Guys, I know a while ago I said I was taking a step back from doing PC VR reviews. Well, I lied. I recently got access to this VR mech brawler called Underdogs, and I gotta say, it's time for a PC VR review. Now, I did get the key a little late, and by late, I mean like yesterday, but I did put a lot of hours in, and honestly, guys, this game is amazing. I think as of right now, this is my favorite VR mech game that I've ever played. But before we get into, you know, why I love the game or whatever, let's get into the actual story and the premise of why we're even here. This game is set in a post-apocalyptic world. AIs have taken over and two brothers, Rig and King, who are also two mech fighters from London, are in trouble when a piece of cryptic data finds its way into King's brain. So we're talking really bad AI here which is ironic considering all the controversy going around. They make their way to New Braca, the last free city ran by humans. Now this place isn't a really good place. It's a place you don't want to walk around. It's full of crime. And it's also surrounded by this place called the jungle, which is ran by gangs, hustlers, criminals. And before the big AI goes up into King's brain and you know kills him, they have to claw their way up through the food chain and make fighting pits. Now I haven't mentioned this so far, but this game is actually a roguelike. Now I know a lot of people, including myself, are tired of roguelikes. I'm tired of this grandpa. That's too damn bad. But honestly, this one is different. A lot of times with some of these VR roguelike games, they have a heavy reliance on those roguelike elements. But in underdogs, the, the roguelike elements are an assist versus a crutch. In this game, when you're actually fighting, you play in a giant mech called Gorilla. Now, it's also called Rilla for short, which is really cool and really funny, not gonna lie. As you progress through the days in the game, you can hustle, steal, and scavenge for 100 plus items to customize your mech. This includes over-the-top weapons you can add to your arms, you can change out your feet. There's a lot of different ways you can customize your mech to fit your playstyle and build. Now that we talked a bit about the mech, I actually want to circle back to the aesthetic of this game. Now, if you've been watching my reviews on the channel for a long time, or even a short time, or even some of them, you would know that I am a sucker for different aesthetics in the VR games. The aesthetic and tone in Underdogs does not miss. This game is more of like a UK hip hop rap aesthetic, and it's one of the coolest I've ever seen in a VR game. I love VR games that one, feature black characters, because not a lot of them that do, Two, also do it right and have actually well-designed different body types. It is an overall great design system for black characters. Also, the soundtrack is fire. Oh, they got the music. Whoever, whoever was curating the soundtrack, you did really good because those times I was actually bobbing my head. I was like, oh, okay, they got some heat in here. But this is a well-designed soundtrack for this game. Like the game is so gritty that I almost want them to make a full cyberpunk game. Like it gives you that cyberpunk 2077 gritty street feel and I love that. Another thing I want to mention is the way they handle cutscenes. These are the most unique cutscenes I've ever seen in a VR game. Now that is a stretch and I wanted to play a lot of VR games, but the fact that the cutscenes are layered and are actually well drawn, well presented, and kind of comic book style is really fun and really cool. And I like that they chose something different other than just having me staring in a flat screen with nothing going on that's visually appealing. All right, that's enough about the aesthetic and me raving over how cool the game looks. Let's talk about the actual, how the combat feels. The combat in this game feels amazing. You really feel one to one with your mech and you honestly feel the power and each swing and just the destruction as you destroy enemies. An issue I had with a lot of VR mech games is that you don't really feel the power of the mech in a lot of them. In this one, you really feel like you're bashing robots apart. And it's actually a good bit of challenge. This game does not hold your hand in terms of difficulty. And you really feel it when you start getting a lot of enemies and a lot of environmental hazards, even fighting against other mechs. Run that shit. Night, Championship. 
You can tell that the developers put a lot of thought into how the enemies interact with the player. Some enemies will actually grab your arms and stop you from moving, and then some enemies will actually circle around you to attack you from behind, which is actually really cool because it makes you move a lot, and honestly, you will get sweaty playing this game. I made the mistake of playing this game after I got done working out, and I really shouldn't have done that because this game will tire out your shoulders, not gonna lie to you, because you got to take wide swings to get maximum damage, especially with the beginning equipment. Something else I wanna talk about is how you actually progress in the roguelike elements. So this game is set in days. So at the end of every day, you know, at nighttime, you actually have a fight. The fight may be a boss battle. It may be just fighting, you know, regular enemies or it could be something else, a challenge. During the day, you actually have to make decisions and build up your reputation amongst different characters you encounter in the game. So there are certain times where you can choose to either fix your mech up from a previous fight, you can buy new items for your mech, you can actually interact with the people in the city by gambling with them, stealing from them, or even just like doing other stuff or even just having special random events that happen. For example, somebody could come up to you and offer to fix your mech, and if you take them up on their deal, they could potentially damage your mech from just mishandling it. There's a lot of slimy stuff that happens to Brock, and you have to be ready for whenever it happens. I actually really enjoyed this because you have to really think about what you're doing. If you have a high reputation with certain people, you could steal from them and lower it. Now, I personally recommend it, but if you really need equipment, you have that option. So I actually like the fact they give you options in the story. If we're gonna have more roguelikes in VR games, I definitely wanna be more like this. Roguelikes with different elements that aren't relying on those roguelike elements. This game, honestly, I think if we took out the roguelike elements, and it's kinda had like a regular story, I think it'll be pretty fun, still. With all that being said, guys, that's everything I pretty much can cover for underdogs. If you guys really want a fun mech game, go get this, it's on PC VR, and Quest 3. Personally, I played it on PC VR because I am a PC VR first type of guy, so I had to go play it on my platform. Shout out to One Hansel for sending me a key. You know, I'm very appreciative of keys. So after that build-up store review, I thought I wasn't getting any more keys, so shout out. But then we're taking a chance on that game. <laughs> this definitely is my runner for game of the year so far. So far, don't get me wrong, so far, is that, you know, I'm not saying it's my game of the year, but as of right now, it's my favorite game of the year so far. But if you want to do VR, make sure you check out the description for discounts. Go to VRArt.com, get your 10% off using code MarduVR. And I got some more sponsorships coming for the channel, man. We growing, finally hit 3K, moving on to that big 4K and 5 and 6 and on up. But like I said, if you want to do VR, remember, there's a deal with a VR headset. Peace.